Today we're going to talk about chronically changing your mouse and game settings. So welcome to Mind Going Games TV, episode 31, Leonard. That'll be the name of this show today. So thank you, Leonard, for the question. He talks about, he's a CSGO player, he talks about how he's constantly changing his settings. Like, uh, he can't stay with the same settings for more than a day. This has been going on for months. So he'll, he'll like, play, have a couple good games, have a bad game, be like, nah, I'm going to change them a little bit. Okay, so I want to talk about what's going on here, and I also want to talk about my sound quality. I know that you're probably having to turn up the volume really loud for this. Uh, I have, right now, I'm recording on a laptop in a public setting, so obviously I don't have my nice microphone at home. And um, you guys will probably just have to live with that until I can... Uh, you know, quit my job, stay at home all day and film videos. But anyway, I have this boom mic here, and it is very directional, so you can't actually pick up any sound from other conversations around. So hopefully, like, you know, somebody walking by in the background isn't going to be really loud to you. Anyway, moving on with that. So essentially what Leonard is talking about is, um, it's kind of like how you blame your teammates for losing games uh, or losing matches. You blame your settings. Uh, I want to, in order to justify the, like, rationalize away from this kind of behavior, I want to talk about elite, uh, elite mechanical skill development. So essentially, when you're learning a skill, you're training yourself to do uh, a performance, you know, with a, with a certain physical setup. And you can equate game settings to genetics in, in real life. Like, you have the body that you have. <clears throat> you train it up. As you get faster, you need to learn how to use your body differently. As you get more in shape, you got to learn how to use it differently as you get you know, bigger and better. Um, you see this most often in marathon, where people reach their physical peak training around the age of 28 to 30. Um, you, well, 20, actually 26 to 30. And after that, they have to learn how to use that body to run the marathon before they can win it. So you see most people peaking out in their marathon performance speeds around age 30 or even after that. And this is because, you know, they're learning their settings, essentially. So um, the other thing to be aware of is that most people's genetics are sufficient to becoming an elite athlete. So we all have strength areas and weak areas, and you always adapt to rely on your strengths and cover up your weaknesses. We see this all across the board in, like, elite uh, performer research when we're trying to figure out, like, talent detection, like, who's going to be elite? And you just can't tell because it all revolves around work and training and learning, cognitive motor learning in the brain. So what you need to do is kind of get to the point where you're like, okay, these genetics I have are good enough. Go find average settings used by average pros, you know, who are good at the game, copy them and just stick with them. Like these are the genetics you're going to learn that you're going to rely on uh, and and take all the way. And remember that there are, there are elite players that use accelerated mice. There are elite players that use trackballs. There are elite players that use all sorts of like crazy gimmicky settings. And that the thing that they've done is train them uh, and, and just like dealt with the weaknesses that they bring and also the strength that they provide. So kind of um, I'm okay with, with Leonard here changing his settings around and experimenting. But you have to agree that the settings are not going to change your performance. And they're not even going to change your, your ultimate end goal performance either. Okay, because like you, you only live up to the genetic potential you have like actually um, like in your physically programmed body, not in your like digitally set up body. And that is all related to focus and learning and the ability, your ability to apply yourself to training. So the sooner that you settle on something and, and just say like this is what I'm going to go with and I'm going to take it all the way, the sooner you'll be able to kind of start mastering that mechanical skill set. Now, there is a, a small benefit to cross-training, that is training with different settings, and that is that you can like make yourself a noob again, make yourself an amateur again, and feel what, it, what it's like to be bad at certain mechanical motions that you've already perfected. And this can allow you to drill and enhance certain areas of the game, like decision-making, that you previously like covered up with your bad skill. So it, there is, I think, some place for this in really fun kinds of mechanical drills that you can do with your team and stuff like that. But I wouldn't make this like a daily training practice. And uh, that's, my, that's my answer. So you'll notice that I'm growing a beard. It's because it's getting cold here in Finland. It's already below freezing now in, in the evening. 
and I hope that it snows before Halloween. That would be just awesome to be just like my first year here. But yeah, my face is cold, so we'll see how long this takes to fill in. Uh, previously in my life, I've never been able to connect my mustache and my, my beard here. It's already happening. So I think that maybe like my testosterone level is just like uh, through uh, all of the sitting around on my butt and taking care of my kids that I've been doing. Go figure. Working out for like four times a week, nothing. But then as soon as I stop working out consistently, like this happens. All right. So anyway, um, I will talk to you all tomorrow. Oh, no. Ask a question for the show. Mindgames.gg slash TV. Mindgames.gg slash TV. And uh, and support us. My name's GG slash Patron. See all the people who already support us. We've, we're growing patrons. We get a couple, you know, uh, piling in. Maybe one comes today. I don't know. But anyway, you know, join our ranks and support our content. I'm starting to realize I need to work up like amazing content for the patrons. So I'm actually starting to put together a schedule of like what we're going to do inside of that membership on the website. So you don't have to jump in now. Like you're not going to miss anything if you don't get in at the, you know, at the ground floor. But uh, feel free to join us at any point and you'll start getting emails about uh, what's coming up for that group. Thanks. Bye.